Star Oasis. I'm your host, Jeff Williams. We're here for another jam-packed, action-filled information overload. And believe me, when I say jam-packed, this one's full to the gills. Uh, I hope you had a great Thanksgiving. As most people have said on Facebook uh, about a week, you know, week before Thanksgiving, you know, don't, don't, don't talk politics and religion at Thanksgiving and, you know, keep quiet and, you know, you're going to have the family arguments. I had a bunch of political people over, so that's all we did was talk politics and religion, and nobody got into an argument. It's actually a pleasant Thanksgiving for a change. So, anyhow, we are going to move beyond Thanksgiving, and we are now into the Christmas season. There's just 25 shopping days left until Christmas, but this part of the year also means the NASA Cinespace video contest is over. The results have been announced, and we are going to show you the winners plus the North Star Oasis entry, which unfortunately didn't even become a finalist this year. I'm going to confess as we go through these, I have not watched any of these videos other than the one that we put together. So and when I give you my commentary, it's probably going to be short because I haven't watched them either. So we're going to start off with their special category. Uh, there's, I'm uh, going to go all the way down here. There are um, two categories uh, where they have award, given awards for, um, that were not the first through third place finishers. And so we're going to start off with Juanita Beyond the Borders by Elena Franco from Mexico. This is the film that best depicts innovation and inclusion in science and technology. And she won $4,000 on this video. So let's take a look. La mujer tiene potencial muy grande. Se ha demostrado que puede haber eh, mujeres extraordinarias y muchas son brillantísimas. Poco a poco se va a ir logrando que haya más mujeres astronautas que van a cumplir su sueño como el que tenía Juanita. Aprendí a leer y escribir desde los tres años y recuerdo que el primer libro que yo leí eh, se refería a las hormigas y me encantó. Tenía siete años cuando me prestaron La Dama de las Camelias. Para mí todo era muy bueno y para mí todos los libros eran muy interesantes. Si eran de, de, de literatura o de historia o de, 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 de qué sé yo, no me importaba. Me gustaba mucho. Y ya desde entonces creo que mi mayor pasión han sido los libros. Que dada mi condición de, de, de uh, persona tan, tan pobre, la secundaria la terminé en la noche. Todos nosotros trabajábamos, pero también leíamos. Hubo este concurso del pasajero espacial, que es un astronauta mexicano, que iba a desarrollar algunos experimentos a bordo. ¿A bordo de qué? A bordo del vehículo donde se iban a lanzar los, los satélites. ¿sí? Los experimentos eran independientes del satélite, pero eso fue una, un extra que ganó el gobierno mexicano. Entré al concurso, eh, cubrí los requisitos que pedían, eh, metí mi solicitud y quedé como semifinalista. El transbordador espacial de, de la NASA, que en ese momento, y en esos años, el transbordador estaba, eh, estaba diseñado para lanzar satélites. Hubo 
el concurso para estos cinco experimentos donde participó activamente y de manera muy abierta y transparente la comunidad académica y científica. Y se propusieron experimentos diversos. Uno de ellos, recuerdo que era sobre germinación de semillas de amaranto, que es una planta mexicana. Son experimentos que se realizaron a bordo de la cabina por el astronauta mexicano. De los 10 finalistas quedó una mujer, eh, solamente una mujer. Eh, en, dentro de los semifinalistas había 16 mujeres. Éramos un poquito más de 200 finalistas, 205. Después 25, después 10 y después llegamos 3. Eh, un, eh, un titular que fue el doctor Rodolfo Neribela, que aún está activo, el primer suplente que fue el doctor Ricardo Peralti Fabi y bueno, su servidor que, que fui el segundo suplente en ese interesante vuelo. Es un sueño muy antiguo que tenía de, de irme al espacio, de hecho tomé clases de astronomía, conocí a todas las estrellas en ese tiempo y me emocionó mucho. Soy oceanógrafa, bióloga marina, y me dedico a investigación sobre eh, invertebrados marinos, en particular en este momento los asociados a las estatuas del Museo Submarino de Arte, que es una obra magna, que existe un museo submarino de esculturas bajo el agua que está enfrente de Cancún. Yo lo que les puedo recomendar a las mujeres, y lo hago con mis estudiantes, pero yo me iría inclusive a las niñas de primaria, es decirles que jamás abandonen sus sueños, jamás, porque sus sueños se pueden realizar, los que sean, y que no dejen nunca de soñar con las estrellas, en mi caso con el mar. Y veo un cartelón convocatoria. Buscaba un pasajero espacial y dije, ¿qué es eso? Y me puse a ver. Pues me entusiasmé porque dije, a ver, este requisito lo cubro, este otro también. Yo fui la única que aprobó todas las pruebas y lo, los grupos eran de 10 cada uno y los otros nueve eran personas con la mitad de mi edad, 25 años, nadie pasó la prueba y me, me dijeron que de mi grupo fui yo la única que cumplía con todos los requisitos. Y hasta me felicitaron. Me sentí muy bien. Me sentí muy chingona. Que yo podía. Creo que ese fue mi, mi, mi mayor consuelo. El saber eh, que clasifiqué. Aunque no me dijeran eh, usted va, usted resultó electa para pasajero espacial, me valía pero sí que había yo cubierto todos los requisitos, sí, y que me felicitaran. Ah, no, yo estaba encantada. Pues fue una experiencia extraordinaria. Realmente para México eh, fue un privilegio recibir una invitación de la NASA para que pudiésemos tener un primer representante en el espacio. Y todos los que nos enteramos de la convocatoria participamos con mucho entusiasmo. Eh, yo creo que nadie sabía realmente de qué se trataba porque en México no había una agencia espacial. Eh, eh, sin embargo, pues cientos de mexicanos de nacimiento, hombres y mujeres, nos inscribimos. Esto de la equidad de género, por fortuna ya 
está siendo tomado como debe de ser por muchos países eh, y la NASA está dando el ejemplo. Y ya ha habido cerca de 45 mujeres de nacionalidad de los Estados Unidos, unas cuatro rusas, eh, dos canadienses, eh, una francesa, una italiana, eh, y yo espero que pronto tengamos una astronauta mexicana. Tú es que quieras hacer algo. Tú te tienes que forjar, ser luchadora. Y tratar de que no te aplasten o de que, te, que no te pongan el pie encima. Yo me considero feliz. Ahora que estoy tranquila y en paz. Sorry, had a big echo there. Uh, here's my take on that. Uh, from the cinematography perspective, I thought it was really, really well done. I thought the pacing was great, and the story was actually a pretty compelling story. Uh, I did have difficulty in reading the subtitles, and of course I'm reading it on a TV set in a studio with bright lights. That uh, does have something to do with it. Uh, just it was really, really hard. So I was able to at least, you know, keep up with the story. And I've noticed in the last few years that usually you get one winner coming out of Mexico. So it was not surprising that this year's Mexican uh, entry was the uh, special category. Um, I thought it was okay. Um, again, I've got to see what the rest of them have to say uh, to you know, what the rest of them are as far as quality is concerned before I can really say that this one was absolutely stellar. But I'll tell you this, compared to some of those ones that we had last year, not bad. That's, I have something to compare to at least. So now we're going to move on to Orest Similanets from the Ukraine. In his special category in which he won $4,000, is the film that best depicts the concept of moon, Mars, and beyond. And his is titled Sleep. Let's take a look. Космічна адреса звучить десь так. Видимий всесвіт, надскупчені діли, місцева група галактик, галактика Чумацький шлях. Сонячна система, третя планета від Сонця – Земля. Я перебував на східній півкулі, яка наразі не освітлюється Сонцем. Це тимчасово, і період безсонячного світла у нас називається ніччю. Сила земного тяжіння дозволяє мені комфортно спати в ліжку. У вісні я набираю сил, доки світло, що прямує від сонця 8 хвилин 20 секунд і швидкістю 300 тисяч кілометрів на секунду, не започаткує новий день. Я дуже люблю моря. Сьогодні читала про Середземне. Цієї ночі мені мало б не снитись морські узбережжі, але сни зазвичай не передбачувані. Oh. 
Кохана працею за морем, а хоч на хвилину не Хто я? Людина. Гомо сапіенс. На цьому зображенні я праворуч. Максимальна відстань, на якій я була від поверхні землі – нуль кілометрів. Але завдяки іншим людям, комп'ютерам, марсоходам, супутникам, телескопам мені пощастило побачити поверхню Марс, бурі на Юпітері, крижані океани Урану, людину на Місяць і навіть форму нашої галактики. 100 мільярдів людей, які існували до нас, навряд чи могли б мріяти про таке. Ми живемо у дуже цікавий час. Інколи новини науки так вражають, що важко повірити, що це не сон. Чи дала я відповідь на ці запитання? Частко. Абсолютно точно відповідь дати неможливо. Завжди залишається місце для невідомості. Кожне нове знання породжує нове запитання. Це одна з тих причин, які надихають нас запускати ракети у космос. Now that one I actually really enjoy. It was much shorter, of course. That was only three and a half minutes. The other one was ten minutes. I really thought that that one definitely did capture Moon, Mars, and beyond. And what I really liked on that one was it had a very interesting creative angle. I thought the artistry presented in that short video was absolutely fantastic. Um, so now we have two of them to judge against the next winners. So now the third, pro third place winner uh, is called The Visitors by Horatio Rodriguez and Susan Spano, uh, United States. Third place, $3,000. So uh, this one is an eight minute, well, eight, almost nine minute video. And we'll see now, uh, now that we've got something to compare against, how does this one stack up with the two that you've just seen? Well, we'll find out. Living on the moon used to be peaceful until these guys showed up. It all started right after we moved here from Venus. We had a cute little house there. Two-car garage, good neighborhood. Sure, it got a little hot there sometimes, but hey. But then my husband, Harold, decides he wants to change the scenery and gets the bright idea of moving to the moon. Harold, what are you doing? Look over here. We need to open our horizons, he says. Explore a little. And the moon has less people, less traffic, he says. Better delis, he says. There's a nice view, he says. 
So we find ourselves a nice little house in a quiet neighborhood, and Harold and me start fresh on the moon. And then the first of them showed up. 40 feet down, two and a half. Picking up some dust. We copy you down, Eagle. Tranquility Base here. The Eagle has landed. I thought it was a moonquake. Could you imagine? But when I peeked outside, I saw these folks hopping around in odd-looking outfits, poking the ground and playing with rocks. <laughs> so I called our neighbor Midge. Honestly, I never liked her much. Always sticking her nose in other people's business. So nosy. Which is why I thought she might know what was going on. Midge had no idea what was going on. But she did say if they trampled her flower bed, they were going to get an earful. So I got on with my day and stopped worrying about our little visitors. Figuring, eh, they'd leave soon enough. And they did but not before making another racket. Three, two, one, ignition. I ran out there to ask them to keep the noise down, but I just missed them. Saw them disappear straight into the wild black yonder. At least they left me a note. I figured they were just a little curious and got it out of their system and probably wouldn't be back. Oh boy, was I wrong. Ugh. they left. They wouldn't even bother cleaning up after themselves, leaving a bunch of stuff lying around. What are we here, huh? Chopped liver? So I grabbed some of the stuff they left, made myself something useful. Lemonade with lemons is what I always say. <sighs> <sighs> One time they almost caught me in my unmentionables. I was so embarrassed. I'm very modest, you know. They looked like a bunch of tourists with their cameras. Just when I thought they couldn't possibly be any more annoying, they saw racing their hot rods around like lunatics. Harold, come here. Of course, Harold was no help. Vroom, vroom, vroom. <laughs> Harold. I'd had enough. It was time to have a little chit-chat before they started doing donuts on my front lawn with their little race cars. Again, I just missed them. But they left me another note. Turns out they were just exploring, checking out their backyard. Guess they weren't planning on coming back for a while. I have to admit, got a little sad. I'd grown attached to seeing what new adventures our visitors had in store for the day. I was starting to miss our little friends. Every time I heard or saw something unusual, I ran outside to say hello. I knew they were coming back. It was just a matter of time, and I didn't want to miss them. One time, I was sure they were back. 
But then I realized it was just a regular old moonquake. I guess Harold was inspired by our visitors to do a little more traveling and exploring. Or he was just tired of me moping around. Either way, it was time for a vacation. I'm glad our little friends spend so much time here. I'd love to see them again. It's been much too long. I do hope they're out there exploring somewhere. It'd be a shame if they weren't. Well, we have a ship to catch. Until next time. Now that one, I have to say, for a third place finish, $3,000 uh, $3, winner, I actually really thought that was clever. Uh, yes, I did laugh. I hope you did too. Um, so congratulations for their third place finish for the visitors because that was creative. Um, I have to say I really enjoyed that. Uh, that was a very unique perspective to look at what would it be like if the Apollo astronauts landed on the moon and, and uh, what did the moon people think? Well, now we kind of know. Uh, I'm still laughing over that one, so they hooked me there. So now we're going to move on to the second place finisher, which is by Graham uh, Uhelski from the United States, uh, $5,000 for Blackout Day. a solar eclipse do uh, to a human being? What does it do to a human being in terms of understanding our place in the universe? That's uh, certainly a, uh, a big question. Um, a few, just a few hundred years ago, human beings wouldn't have even known that the eclipse was coming. And so here you are looking up, but all of a sudden the sun is disappearing. And, you know, what are the thoughts for the, all of, you know, human existence where everybody's looking up going, the gods must be angry at us, you know, and now we have the ability not only to know it's coming, people are excited about it. We know people that travel to go be under the umbra, you know, and, and making an event, you know, a celestial event. So that's it, the last solar eclipse to be seen on this continent in this century. And as I said, not until August 21st, 2017, will another eclipse be visible from North America. That's 38 years from now. May the shadow of the moon fall in a world at peace. Pretty okay spot, you think? I think this will work. So there's been a bear sighted in the woods that is literally en route to where we're going. Dude, I can't even see your face at all. <laughs> that lens right there. People, we got people coming in from all over the country pumping in dollars into like, they you know. They got buy food, they got buy gas. Food, gas, hotels, like. <laughs>
temperatures drop and this is pretty gonna get interesting. So waiting for the penumbra. Bruh. Well, my thoughts on that, I thought they did an incredible, incredible job with the shot selection. Uh, I thought the uh, visual acuity was great. Uh, they had a very uh, centralized theme. The problem, I, I did have one problem with it, and that is the pacing. The pacing was a little bit too slow. And I say that because when I see my producer in the control booth yawning, that tells me that he's not mentally engaged in it. At the same time, they kind of lost me mentally at about the five minute mark. Um, and, and again, this is you know not a, a big criticism, except the pacing could have been a little bit better. But uh, I think that the graphics, the storyline does, to a certain extent, make up for that. So I thought it was very, very well done. Uh, I think from a cinematography perspective, uh, they did a whole lot better than what we put together, so uh, kudos to them for that. So it wasn't bad. Uh, when I look at The Visitors versus Blackout Day, The Visitors I thought had the more compelling storyline, but I did think that Blackout Day you know, really did get into the richness of what the Cinespace competition is all about. So yes, I could definitely see that as a strong second place finish. Again, I haven't even seen the first place finisher, so I'm going to withhold judgment until we take a look at Spacecraft. This is from Jan uh, Turek and Prokop Yelenik from the Czech Republic. Uh, with their five-minute video, they won $10,000 as the top prize in this year's NASA Cinespace Contest. And let's take a look at what they have to offer. I believe that this nation should commit itself to achieving the goal of landing a man on the moon and returning him safely to the earth.
Houston uh, Tranquility Base here. The Eagle has landed. Tranquility, we copy you on the ground. Hi, this is Dottie, and I'm back home, but I'm unavailable to answer the phone, and if you leave a message, I'll get back to you when I'm able. Thank you. Uh, Houston Discovery. Go ahead, Lauren. For those uh, technically inclined this morning, I'd like to pass on the quote of the day from the onboard astronomer, something to the effect that the Big marble sure looks far away today. Sure it does. Further away than anyone in the shuttle yet. Discovery, go for Hubble release. Twenty seconds to LOS T dress. Project, nice to be in orbit. And Lauren, that's all that we have for you tonight. Uh, we'll leave you alone, let you get on to bed at your convenience, and we'll see you tomorrow. We enjoyed today. Well, I have to say that that was definitely imaginative. Um, in case you didn't quite get it. Now, I have to confess, I did watch the beginning of that one once before when I was actually downloading these originally. Uh, what two weeks ago? Uh, at first, at first glance, I didn't quite understand what they were getting at, but I understand it now with the placement of the word space and craft, because they were using different types of craft making materials in order, you know, uh, like paper crafts, uh, making uh, models, you know, that kind of craft to tell the story of space using, of course, some of the NASA original footage and uh, for video and with, uh, with the audio tracks played in. I was very, very imaginative. You could tell they put a lot of effort into it. Personally, if I had to look at all five of these and rate them myself just based upon what I've seen here, I don't think spacecraft would have uh, taken the first place in my view. I would have probably done that either honorable mention for Moon, Mars, and Beyond or for third place. Uh, so of this group, I do think Blackout Day was probably the superior product with the visitors sliding into second place. But I wasn't a judge. I was a competitor, and the judges didn't view my work as uh, good enough. Uh, I 
again, looking at what, what have won, I understand some of the flaws in the uh, program that we put together. But this is why we do it, and this is why we have, have fun showing you these, because I analyze film constantly, especially when it comes to stuff that I'm putting together. I'm very meticulous, and when you're in a judging, you pretty much, for anything, whether it's writing or whether it's um, video, you pretty much have to cater to the judges if you're going to win. And you got to look at what the judges prefer. And I don't know who the judges are, but you kind of look from contest to contest to start seeing some patterns in what the judges look for, including pacing, use of uh, what kind of footage, the audio tracks, uh, and, and all of that. So with that in mind, we're going to show you what we put together, uh, the staff here at North Star Oasis. Mainly me, I will have to say, I did take the lead on this one, but I did get some good assist from uh, our producer, Dallas Pearson, and then our guest host from uh, two weeks ago, uh, Mike Peden. He helped out with some graphics work. Um, this one, I will confess, though, I did, we, did, we were going up against the deadline, and we kind of put it together on the fly. Uh, so whereas the five winners actually did go out and do a lot of uh, um, scripts and placement shots, once again, like last year, we used a lot of NASA footage. So... We'll see, uh, and, and I don't know what you think, but here's what we put together. Ever since the beginning, man has looked to the sun, the moon, and the stars with wonder and amazement. In 459 BC, the pre-Socratic Greek philosopher Anaxagoras wrote that the purpose of life is the investigation of the sun, the moon, and the heavens. It is Greek philosopher Socrates who said, man must rise above the earth to the top of the atmosphere and beyond, for only thus will he fully understand the world in which he lives. In 1610, Johannes Kepler wrote, as soon as somebody demonstrates the art of flying, settlers from our species of man will not be lacking on the moon and Jupiter. Given ships or sails adapted to the breezes of heaven, there will be those who will not shrink from even that vast expanse. And in the pamphlet, Side Real Messenger, also written in 1610, Galileo Galilei wrote, It is a most beautiful and delightful sight to behold the body of the moon. For thousands of years, soldiers have used the sunlight to guide their marches by day. and moonlight by night. The moon. Ever since the beginning, man has been fascinated by the moon. Even me. My story begins on July 5, 1969, when my parents married in a small church in Michigan's Upper Peninsula. Fifteen days later, they sat together watching a small black and white television set as Neil Armstrong took the first human steps on the surface of the moon, fulfilling a dream that's as old as humanity. It was the first big event in their young marriage, but I wasn't even around yet. And down, 220 feet. Contact 
Tranquility Base here. The Eagle has landed. Okay, Neil, we can see you coming down the ladder now. Okay, I just checked uh, getting back up to that first step. Uh, it's, uh, that isn't collapsed too far, but uh, it's adequate to get back up. Roger, we copy. That's a pretty good little jump. I'm uh, at the foot of the ladder. The lamb foot beds are only uh, uh, depressed in the surface about uh, one or two inches. Although the surface appears to be uh, very, very fine grained as you get close to it. It's almost like a powder. Down there, uh, it's very fine. I'm going to step off the limb. That's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. Oh, that looks beautiful from here, Neil. It has a stark beauty all its own. It's uh, like much of the high desert of uh, the United States. It's uh, different, but it's very pretty out here. Five, four, three, two, one. Dave Scott, Jim Irwin, and Al Warden were on their way to the moon in Apollo 15 when I breathed my first breath of life late on the night of July 28, 1971 in a Washington, D.C. hospital. Hey, that's just super. It's, you know, unreal. Dave, I'm reminded of a favorite biblical passage from Psalms. I look unto the hills from whence cometh my help. But of course, we get quite a bit from Houston, too. A few months later, Isaac Asimov wrote, Reaching the moon by three-man vessels in one long bound from Earth is like casting a thin thread across space. The main effort in the coming decades will be to strengthen this thread, to make it a cord, a cable, and finally, a broad highway. Then when Apollo 17 returned from its lunar mission in December 1972, we suddenly stopped going as the Apollo program was canceled. I was only 18 months old. When Skylab was falling back to Earth in 1979, I was glued into the nightly television news. I wanted to know everything about it. As a seven-year-old, it was fascinating stuff. Yet when it crashed in the Indian Ocean, a part of me crashed with it. Then in April 1981, when Space Shuttle Columbia made its maiden voyage, I watched every minute of the coverage with visions and hopes of my own spaceflight. I wrote a letter to NASA late in 1985, asking about the requirements to be an astronaut. Then the Space Shuttle Challenger exploded, and I never got the information. This, of course, was before the days of the internet. And yes, when the astronauts died, I cried. In 2000, I visited Cape Canaveral while in the U.S. Air Force. The Space Shuttle Atlantis was on the launch pad for STS-101. One of the astronauts for that mission was Jeffrey N. Williams. Same name, different guy. While I admit I'm a bit jealous, he has done our name proud. The Space Shuttle fleet has flown and been retired, and we still haven't been back to the moon. Asimov's dream of a broad highway through space has still not materialized. I'm 47 now, the same age as Alan Shepard was when he flew to the moon on Apollo 14, making him the oldest person to set foot on the lunar surface. He was at the end of his distinguished career. Mine never began. Will we ever go back to the moon? Maybe someday. It's too late for me. My role now is to help inspire, prepare, and support the next generation of astronauts who want to go to the moon or beyond. Technological advances have given support and training to the next generation. Future astronauts like Alyssa Carson, who at 17 has already gone to every space camp, become a scuba diver, taken classes at International Space University, and assisted in a microgravity spacesuit evaluation 
has already had more training and support than was available to me at her age. What did you win a medal for, Alyssa? Oh, it was just from the first space camp I went to when I was like really young, around seven, okay. and so childhood memory. There you go. So far behind you at 16. <laughs> <laughs> okay, pitch, roll. Oh, right. Two, one, out. Parabola success. She wants to go to Mars. I hope she makes it. Maybe someday. I hope I'm still here when she does it. As Arthur C. Clarke wrote, the moon is the first milestone on the road to the stars. Fare thee well, star voyager. Good luck and Godspeed. And that was what we put together. That's what I put together. Uh, yeah, I wrote the script, and yes, it was semi-autobiographical. Um, I thought we did another strong entry. Um, apparently, the judges didn't feel quite that same way. So it is what it is. Uh, personally, I do think that what we put together was still better than uh, what won in the special category for Moon, Mars, and Beyond. But I'm a competitor, I'm not a judge. So I had fun putting this together again this year and already putting some concepts together for next year's competition. So uh, around this time next year, we'll have another NASA Cinespace show and maybe someday uh, we'll actually be able to come out and say that we actually won something. But uh, by and large, I, I enjoy this. I enjoy telling the story. and. That's one of the things I like about this TV show is just telling the story, uh, whatever narrative that we're going with in any given week. And that's part of life. There are things that we can do to just sit back and enjoy. One of those things happens to be music. And so we're going to leave you today with the 2014 U.S. Air Force Band Holiday Flash Mob from the Air and Space Museum at the Smithsonian in Washington, D.C.
Ford, Dallas Pearson producer. I'm your host, Jeff Williams. You're watching North Star Oasis, reminding you that there's 25 shopping days left until Christmas. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next week.